What is good, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube? It's your boy Foxy. Welcome back to the Fox's Den. Getting into another reaction. Kaiju number eight, episode four. Bro, I'm loving this show. This shit is so good. I was not expecting the comedic relief from it. Like, the comedic relief in this show is top tier. As I've said before, comedic relief or comedy in shows usually isn't the focus point of the show. Uh, at least, uh, unless, of course, it is a genuine comedy. But most shows have some sort of comedic relief even though it isn't a comedy one piece is a great example the comedic relief in one piece fucking top tier this show was not expecting top tier comedic relief i was not and it's it is it's top tier it's so fucking funny it is hilarious bro so good that's an that's a beautiful touch to something that isn't the focal point the, the focal point is also really good like the the plot so far of the show the universe that we're in uh you know the, how everything works like these combat suits that we got introduced to last episode uh the weapons and obviously the combat suits affect those weapons and, and how much unleashed power you're bringing out of the suit and it, it's just so fucking cool bro so last episode in particular we saw kafka and ichikawa and you know obviously meeting some of these other cast members start to take part in this second part of the exam which was an aptitude test fit fitness test all that stuff which kafka did not do well in and they're really falling on this trope of once you hit 30 you're done dude <laughs> once you hit 30 it's hard to keep up with those that are in their prime you know average young age where they can perform at their best and that is true to some extent you know in if in any form of athleticism once you reach a certain age like yeah you're not going to be able to really hang as much as you did or were able to perform at your best back when you were in your prime when whatever that prime is you know what i'm saying and that relates physically that relates mainly on just physical attributes when it comes to your age and so you know kafka's sitting there like damn am I, is this really do you really become this weak once you hit 30 he's like fuck bro i can barely keep up so he doesn't score well in the fitness test he's like he like barely at least he didn't make last but he's only like five or six above last i think he got like 219 out of 225 some shit like that and then of course shinomiya which we have been introduced to she's the prodigy of the fucking show she is insane she is that bitch she is crazy i love her character she's so confident and it comes off a little bit as arrogance but that's directed towards kafka kafka just because kafka kind of like started a little bit of a competition with her and you know showed his strength off a little bit when she when he probably shouldn't have with the truck in the in the parking lot or the van and so she's you know expecting like yo come on like start doing something bro like this, the exam's almost over. When are you going to, like, show that power you showed me in the parking lot? So she's expecting, you know, him to, like, show his true strength. But he can't just do it because he's afraid of the consequences. Like, yo, what are these people... Like, the, the worst case scenario that they're thinking of immediately every time is that I'm going to fucking die. They're going to kill me because I'm a kaiju. So I'm very curious. It's, it's, it's a matter of what I keep saying, how and when it's going to happen. Because there's no way he can hide it forever. And it's... It's a disadvantage for everybody if he keeps hiding it and isn't able to perform to his full capabilities using the kaiju power. Because if he does, I mean, that's a huge asset. Like, he can, he, he doesn't have to risk dying like this. Like, how he is, like, you know, trying to be a support role and not, you know, having uh, as much talent as everybody else and, and risking it as kind of like a normal person. You know what I'm saying? Which he isn't anymore. You know, he's a, he's a, he can turn into a kaiju and be super useful. It's just a matter of the timing on when it's going to be revealed and how people react to that, which obviously people are probably going to panic and be like, what the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck? But it's a matter of what are the steps after that? You need to, I'm assuming it's not going to be some just brain dead reaction, you know, off the jump. Maybe it is, but at least somebody will be smart enough or willing to hear him out or something and get an actual conversation like, yo, this sounds crazy, but he can be very useful to us, which should be the case in this show. It's just a matter of how and when it's going to happen. So, yeah, last episode, they got through the uh, second part of the exam, and now they're in the final part, which is actually taking out Kaiju and seeing how they perform in, in these situations and how they adapt to them. And Kaiju, I mean, uh, Kafka and Ichikawa are doing very well and playing a support role, especially Kafka, since he had no, like, 0% in the uh, unleashed power in the suit. And he was like, okay, well, how can I be useful? Like, obviously, they're not testing us on just kills or or you know um, kaiju taken out 
they're testing us on how we adapt and how we can be useful and and, and even kafka in his normal form human form like that he can be because he has the knowledge from working in the cleanup crew he knows how a lot of these kaiju work or their weaknesses stuff like that he, he's very really knowledgeable so that's a really b good trait that he comes with uh it's just a matter of the talent that he's kind of lacking in his normal form but again when is when is the secret gonna get out it's gonna it's gonna it's gotta happen soon i feel like maybe it happens this episode so we left off with him just barely bringing out a little bit of unleashed power 0.01 percent better than nothing and he did that of his own volition and determination in his normal form so how much farther is he going to push the limits in his normal form before he really has to do something or else he's going to die I have a feeling the secret might come out this episode, and that's what I'm looking forward to, and, and how this final exam finishes up, and how everybody reacts. I, I, I'm so excited. This is such a good show. I'm loving it. Let's get into the reaction. If you guys enjoy it, please like down below, comment, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell so you know the next one's dropping. Let's get into it. Kaiju number eight, episode four. Damn. Intro right away? I fuck with that. Again. Probably my favorite opening of the season so far. This shit is gas. Oh, so good, bro. That opening is so good. I love it. Not only the opening, but the whole soundtrack of the show is top tier. It's really good. Very unique. Fits the universe in the show very well. And it just bumps. It's so good. <laughs> He's putting everything he is he has into fucking... Into standing up. <laughs> Does, does, does his kaiju power by any chance have something that like can like heal him in some way because that would be clutch but i feel like they would also notice that too because since they can keep track of his vitals and shit so i don't know if that's possible i guess we'll find out <coughs> yo ichikawa's a fucking ride or die bro he he willing to help bro he's a good friend and they just met <laughs> and they look ridiculous. Hey, they support each other, bro. <laughs> no big comic relief. <laughs> for real though, that's that's pretty self-aware for the show. One of the characters, like, yo, they're they'll be comic relief at best. <laughs> Eat my dust <laughs> immediately. She's so quick with it. Right as he said, yeah, I'm gonna get there first. She was like, no, you're not. <laughs> I love the combat in this show. This shit is sick, bro. It's like you're playing a PVE like MMO almost. Like they're using weapons, suits and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they got gear that helps them take on these monsters. Oh. oh yeah, that's the first thing we saw at the beginning before they went in at the front gate. That's the Honju. Bro, she don't give a fuck. Oh my god. Yo, yeah, nah, she is like that, bro. She and Mia don't fuck around. No hesitation jumped in between his teeth and shit, knowing full well you can get bit by that thing. Oh my god, bro. She's nasty. <laughs> and they didn't do much else, but he, hey, he passed. Technically. <laughs> and they were putting their all on that combination undone. <laughs> like they're a mech or some shit. <laughs> Yeah, is that gonna play in a factor in anything? Like, are they gonna really let everybody pass, even though she, like, carried so hard? I wonder what her ambition is. Uh, she wants to make her dad proud? She's looking up. Maybe her dad passed away. She's looking up to the sky, like thinking... Wait, what the fuck is that? Oh, shit, what the fuck? 
Wait, 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 wait. What the fuck? Is this not a part of the te What the fuck is that? Oh my god, bro. What the fuck's going on? That's not a part that's not a part of the test, right? Or or the proctors and like the rest of the defense force weren't expecting this to happen, right? Cuz they called off the test. Why are they getting back up? What is happening? Oh shit, bro. It's like petting it. And it looks almost humanoid. It can talk? What is going on, bro? That nah, that that, that kaiju's gotta be fucking crazy. Yoshi, <laughs> it's like it's like he's petting his fucking pet. Oh, bro. Yeah, can we, they recover the drones already, bro. Fucking bring the drone. Okay, there we go. Why are y'all still just watching? Like, shouldn't y'all be already moving out there to fucking go and save them? Me or her, yeah. Okay, Lily, Captain, Vice Captain. They they gotta be fucking insane. I mean, we've already seen a little bit of what Ashiro's capable of, but we haven't really seen the Vice Captain in action. Bro, she got multiple wounds so quickly. Yeah, she can't move, bro. And she's the best one out of the group. She's thinking like, there's no way I'm dying here, right? That too, a lot of the other people that can't fight as good as her. They're really, they really are risk, bro, they could die right now. For the sake of the nation's future. Oh, she's a perfectionist because her dad expected her to be a perfect, perfect, like perfect for the country. Like it had super high expectations for her. That seems what is pushing her, her goal or, you know, ambitions are, as I was wondering. Oh, fuck, bro. I have a feeling, bro, this is, this is the moment. This is the moment where Kafka has to come in. He's got to do it for the, the better of keeping people alive. You know what I'm saying? Why would you not save people if you have the opportunity to? Even if people are going to question it and whatnot. Mmm, seems like her dad... You know, was never really around for her. Seems she yearns for his recognition. Yo, that's Brooke, bro. What's good, dog? See. Yep. He never, like, really cared about her accomplishments. That's what makes her yearn for his acknowledgement. Oh, her mother passed when she was young. And this is gonna end up. See, this is kind of biting her in the ass right now because she's risking her own life when she should be. Tr she should be trying to escape. Like she's pushing herself way harder than she has to because she feels like she has to be perfect. God damn it, Dad! What the fuck? Oh! Her arm. That shit is still evolving, or whatever the fuck. No, they won't. That's why Kafka's gonna have to transform. She saved him. It's time for him to return the favor. It's time for him to return the favor! It's time for him to return the favor! Right when she's at her lowest point and she thinks she can't fight anymore. Come on, Kafka, come on! You gotta do it to save somebody. It's for a good thing. Worry about the fucking reactions and the consequences later. Wow, and he told her that he she ga he gave her acknowledgement like you're fucking awesome. You did great Which he's always been yearning for and now he's gonna protect her. Oh let's fucking go Oh 
Oh, let's go, cop. Good, come on. Fuck that thing up. I was about to say, I swear if the episode ended there, I was like, fastest episode ever. Okay, yeah, that's good fucking communication. Good thinking, quick critical thinking. In a in a in a environment of panic. He's already gone. He, yep. He left immediately. He's like, nah, I gotta help her. Bro, it had to be done. One for one, bro. She saved me. I save her, bro. That's how it works. Return the favor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Damn, he said, yo, back that shit up, bro. Oh, yo, he looks so fucking tough. Nah, the character is like, I'm crazy. Mm, he might be able to catch he might damn so bro he's strong as fuck that means they've hard they hardly ever see a number like that and that's what fucking kafka is holy shit nah this is so fucking hype The animation is so good. What the fuck? Oh my god, come on, come on, bro. Fuck that thing up. Bro, it's just bones. Bro, look, yeah, her face is my face, bro. What? Oh my god. Oh my god, its legs were left behind in that. Oh, bro. Oh my god. Blood. Go uh, it's raining. It's raining blood. It's raining blood. Bro. So fucking badass, dude. <laughs> That's so tough. <laughs> She's about to pass out, yeah, bro. Holy fuck. See, they're, they're gonna see the remains again and be like, How, who the fuck? Yeah, who would do this? Who could be possible of this? Uh, they're gonna get closer to they're gonna get clues yep they're gonna relate this to the scene they saw before and be like okay the kaiju number eight was in this exam and because shinomiya was the one that was up against this crazy honju that was defeated and obliterated and the ones that saved her or are carrying her are Ichikawa and Kafka. They're gonna get close to figuring out who it is. Damn, that was already three months ago? Holy shit. Yep, he's, I knew he was gonna be thinking that way. <laughs> There's always somebody better than you, but you there's a good there's an interesting way of looking at that. That you surround yourself around good people, you can still improve, even if you don't get better than them. You can still improve. Oh wow, she's listening. Oh wow, listen in on the conversation a little bit. Paid her respects for, for thanking them for saving her. 
Mm, okay, he's like, all right, let me become an officer first. And I'll have a proper conversation with you. Let me catch up to you. Let me catch up to you first. Bet. Bet that. Bro, this episode was insane. Damn! She really is getting the best treatment. Girl, you're good. Like, bro, stop trying to live up to daddy's expectations all the time. You can't be perfect, but you are fucking plenty good. You are badass. Yeah, she's like, no, I didn't do that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Since he saved her, she's gonna uphold his wish. Like, yo, don't tell anybody. It's gonna be a little bit longer before the de actual defense force and everybody, you know, it's made public knowledge or whatever. I'm, I'm fine with that. That's, yo, this episode was crazy. <laughs> This motherfucker. This is how you answer a phone, right? Yep, that's what I was thinking. It's a human. But I think it's a kaiju that is able to turn into a human. Yeah, because the way he's talking about humans, humans are so peculiar about time. This is how you answer a phone, right? You know, shit like that. Oh. Oh my god, bruh. He's a part of the cleanup crew that Kafka and Ichikaro are part of, bro. This is crazy! Nah, this show is, this show is so good. This show is so good. This show is goaded. This show is fucking goaded. It's goaded. End of story. This is one of the best shows of the fucking season. Hands down. Hands down. Wow. Alrighty, guys. What another amazing episode. Episode. Jesus. Of Kaiju number eight. I mean, that was the best episode yet. Holy fuck. This shit is good. God damn. Yeah, this is very quickly becoming one of my favorite shows of this season and probably, you know, definitely in my top list. I mean, this is fucking really good, dude. We saw a lot happen this episode. We got back to pretty much right where we left off in the beginning. We're seeing them, you know, the examinees, you know, the people that are participating in the final exam do their thing. Shinomiya doing her thing defeating the normal yoju pretty quickly effortlessly and then even the honju uh defeated that pretty effortlessly as well and you know it was looking like the exam was over like oh bet all done and then you know the fucking proctors and the vice captain mina they're all looking at the results and it's like oh, okay yeah i mean no serious injuries finished way quicker than we thought it was going to be but obviously it's thanks to her shinomiya so she definitely carried very hard which isn't a bad thing so, you know, whatever team she's on, she's definitely going to be very useful and, and effective and, and really make her team shine thanks to her capabilities. And that's exactly what happened in this exam. She carried, but that's not a bad thing. She's fucking, she's just that fucking good. So looking like it's over and they're ending it and they're bringing back the drones and everything, telling everybody to come back or retreat. And that's when all of a sudden this fucking humanoid looking kaiju that can apparently fucking talk reveals itself next to the Honju that was defeated by Shinomiya, shoots Shinomiya with some sort of projectile into her chest, barely missed her heart, or she barely, she like focused the energy to like where her heart was and like was barely able to, you know, re repel it enough or whatever. So she still took damage, but it really shocked her. And then that motherfucker, she realizes it can talk. It starts petting the Honju like it's a fucking pet or some shit. Like, oh, don't worry, you know, uh, I'll let you do, I'll let you take care of her. And then it's like the Honju starts, you know, regenerating and coming back to life. Same with the Yoju on the battlefield. He does all that and then he just dips. He's nowhere to be seen after that. And it seems the Yoju and the Honju got stronger as well. Like they, he helped them evolve or something like that. Something crazy. I don't know, but they come back to life. It's looking bad. She got fucked up by that humanoid ka kaiju, so she was already kind of like weakened and, and couldn't really finish off the Honju maybe to her full capabilities where she could have if she was not injured. And then she's also trying to live up to the expectations of her dad, like, you know, in her head and what he's instilled in her from a young age, like always be perfect. 
and never really gave her acknowledgement, didn't cheer her on or uh, congratulate her for her accomplishments and, and doing well and getting the top scores and all of this, you know, when she's yearning for that. And so she constantly thinks that she has to be perfect when she doesn't have to be perfect. You're already insane. You're crazy. You're so good. But you don't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. But that's what was instilled in her from her father, which obviously this is where her ambition and sort of personality comes from. And, you know, she expects herself to have to do everything perfect and be perfect when that's you don't have to be. That's a heavy burden that her father put on her. So she's been trying to live up to his expectations. And that really showed in that fight because she was like, I can still fight. I can keep going. I got to do. I got to be perfect. I got to take this down. If I lose, I'm not perfect. So it's really kind of conflicting because it was keeping her in a terrible situation, which if she was thinking clearly and rationally she she would have been like she would have accepted like okay i can't take this on i'm already injured that's okay let me retreat save my own life to live another day so i can save more people in the future but again the expectations of her father were holding her back and that thought of having to be perfect so that's where we we're at with that and then that's where I was thinking, yep, Kafka was going to have to come in and, and help out, bro. Because she was, she literally started to admit defeat or like started giving up. It was looking like she was going to die. And I was like, this is the moment like Kafka is going to have to come in and save, save her because she saved him. Now it's him. It's time for Kafka to return the favor. It, bro, it's so beautifully fucking written, like how you can expect shit like that. Like, I love when moments like that happen and then it, it does happen and it's so satisfying. Like, oh, and sure enough. Yeah, he comes in, he transforms, he saves her defeats that honju fucking absolutely obliterates it she's like very shocked obviously and she's like what the fuck is going on and then eventually she passes out once ishikawa gets there and is you know kind of rid ridiculing uh kafka for transforming and it's like bro we had another choice but kafka got lucky because of just how strong he is apparently his fortitude like the scale that they rate kaiju's strength or powerful or power whatever they call it fortitude and the reading that the lady saw on the screen was 9.8 which the vice captain was like impossible there's got to be some sort of malfunction something so that means that they hardly ever see a number that fucking high and that's the power the fortitude that's coming out of fucking kafka when he's a kaiju that is insane so who knows what the fortitude of is of that other humanoid kaiju that apparently is actually a kaiju that is somehow turning into a human the opposite of kafka which is crazy that was a crazy twist holy fuck but yeah they see that they well they didn't get to see anything because the drones were malfunctioning but they saw that number at least and they were just like there's no fucking way and then so they get to the scene they see the you know remains of this honju and they're like okay this looks awfully familiar to the scene three months ago are they connected and sure enough this is where i'm thinking like yep they're gonna start getting more clues they're gonna start putting the pieces together and then they also saw the drone that like you know, was paying attention to Kafka and Ichikawa that brought Shinomiya back. Those are the only two that brought her back and saved her. So they can kind of deduce probably like, okay, they were at that scene. They had to have been because that's where Shinomiya was. Shinomiya was at the Honju. So that means Kafka and Ichikawa had to, uh, had to have been too. And so they're assuming that Shinomiya was the one that defeated it because that makes the most sense. There's no way Kafka and Ichikawa after their performances and what they'd known from their final exam st st statistics and whatnot that they could have defeated it. But they didn't have the footage of what happened when Kafka was there. And so that's why he, you know, asked very nicely to Shinomiya, like, please don't tell anybody, like, please, please, please. And, you know, right when he got there, before he even transformed, he's like, yo, Shinomiya, you did great. Like, he gave her acknowledgement and, like, praise right away, which is what she's been yearning for from her father forever. And that's very satisfying for her. And she's never really received that, I feel like. And it's still not the person, it's not coming from the person that she probably wants it to come from. But it's still satisfactory because she's been looking from that for that from somebody and her dad will never give it to her. She remembered that he asked him, asked her to keep it a secret. And so when the ca vice captain came to talk to her and he assumed that she was the one that defeated it, she kind of looked like she was like, oh, it's not, you know, she was kind of looking like, oh, that's not right. And then he was like, is that not what happened? And then she mustered up the courage and was like no yeah i defeated it and you know decided to keep it secret safe because she was like yeah he saved me like i i i should do right by him you know what i'm saying she feels like she should at least do that much since 
even though they were kind of even like they both saved each other and that after kafka saved her still it seems like the right thing to do at least until she knows more maybe but like i said they have a good amount of clues now to where they might be able to pinpoint that kaiju number eight is kafka or at least get really fucking close to it so that was a fucking amazing episode we saw towards the end uh kafka and ichikawa also in the hospital but kafka the one actually in the hospital mina ishiro listening in on their conversation and kafka you know you know being a positive optimistic person as usual and uh just expressing his mind on what he had to do and and you know his i guess outlook on things and you know it's good that she's listening in on that and then she showed herself and thanked them for saving shinomiya which is pretty pretty nice that they got acknowledgement from the captain of division three and he was about to talk to her and he was like no nah, not yet let me fucking join the force first let me catch up to her first at least a little bit and then i'll talk to her which i think is very beautiful and that's pretty much where we're at and then at the very end we saw the fucking you know humanoid kaiju in a bathroom stall listening to the news of what happened and you know hearing that there was zero casualties and he's like no 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 there's no way so it seems that he was trying to he was fucking around to, to do that like that was his goal was to fuck people up and turn the exam upside down and you know cause havoc and so he heard that on the news and he was like there's no way and then the phone was ringing he was like oh is this how you answer a phone so that's the first clue right away where i noticed okay this isn't because at first you're thinking like humanoid kaiju is this some is this another person like kafka but they're just doing fuck shit because they got so much power you know what i'm saying like you, when you get power in your hands you do one or two things most people would probably do some crazy shit like if i could fly or if i could be invisible think about what you could do being invisible conniving through the law like fucking you're invisible so you could probably I mean, I can't, well, yeah, invisibility would probably help in like a bank heist, you know, some sort of crazy shit like that. Like when you have power, mo nine times out of 10, you'd probably do some wild shit with it. And that's, those are, that's like one of the two routes or you could like, you know, hunker down and try to be a, a you know, uphold a like person and like try to be a hero, which Kafa is kind of doing, you know, he's, tr he's trying to save people and do good things with his power. So that was the first, I guess, thought that came to mind, like, okay, this thing this humanoid kaiju might be a human that can turn into a kaiju just like kafka but doing opposite actions like doing stupid shit but actually that clue where he was like is this how you answer the phone and then another one where he said something along the lines of like humans are so peculiar about time the way he's talking about humans the way he's interacting with normal human technology he's talking about it like he's not a human and that's what it's alluding to. This is a kaiju that can turn into a human. What the fuck? And it's a part of the cleanup crew that Kafka and Ichikawa are a part of, or were a part of. Like, dude, what? I mean, talk about the plot thickens, bro. What an amazing show. This, this show has been off to a strong start, and we're only four episodes in. We got eight more. This shit is gas, bro. So good. But yeah, that's where we're at for Kaiju number eight. God damn, so amazing. I I'm loving this, bro. Can't wait for more. Can't wait for next week. That's going to do it for me. If you guys enjoyed the reaction, please like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new. Hit the notification bell so you the next one's dropping. I'll see you on the next one. Y'all be good. Deuces.